Hello, welcome to the Keyence IX training module. Today we'll discuss how to use the IX's average height tool. The average height tool measures the height of all points within a given tool window and then calculates the average height measurement for that region. The average height measured on a master part is then compared to future parts to determine an OK or no good reading. This tool is best suited for measuring a target that is small or has an irregular shape like a screw head. Today we'll talk about how to use the average height tool in scan mode. In scan mode, you'll first complete your detection setup and master registration. Then it's time to add our average height tool. Click add tool and select average height. Then press OK. A square window will appear on screen. This is our measurement window. Drag this window onto the feature of the part you'd like to measure the average height of. I'd like to measure the average height of this screw, which is circular. So I'll select circle as my window shape then drag the circle onto the screw. The area highlighted in green is the area measured by the sensor. You'll see you also have the option to apply a mask to the tool. This is useful if you only need to know the average height of one part of the object, or if mounting and shape require a precise tool window. Say I only want to know the average height of half of this screw. I can click Add Mask, then drag the mask over half of the screw, using the curved arrow to rotate the mask. You can also choose to make your mask either a rectangle or a circle. Once your mask is set, you can click Close. From here you have the option to add another mask, which will repeat the process we just went through or cut your mask. By cutting the mask, we can delete portions of the mask we just created, so that the tool will once again measure the area we cut from the mask. Now we can click Close, and for this demonstration I'll click Clear and OK to eliminate the masks we've created. Then we'll press Next. Here we can choose how much of the area we want to measure. The averaging area option determines how much of the area in the tool window will be included in the measurement. You can select between small, normal, and large, and you can see visually how the size of the measured area changes. The detection method option changes which height section within the tool window we will be measuring. By default, the detection method is set to selected area. With this option, we get the choice to pick between the lower and higher height sections within the tool window. You can also select max or min for your detection method. Max will automatically select the highest height section, while Min will automatically select the lowest height section. You can also manually adjust the area measured using the sensitivity adjustment. Watch how the measured area, shown in green, changes as I adjust my sensitivity slider. I'll leave my sensitivity where I found it, then press Close and Next. On this screen, we can adjust our reference height settings. By default, this function is turned off. You can choose to specify another tool as a reference height, which will compare the reading of the average height tool to the reading of another tool. I only have this one tool set so far, so we can choose specify in the tool, and we'll see we get an option to specify the method of detection for a reference height. This works in a very similar manner to the previous detection method steps. You can see with the lowest area selected, the lowest height within our tool becomes highlighted in orange, and this becomes the reference height our average height measurement is compared to. If I click higher, the center of the screw becomes our reference height and our measurement becomes much smaller as the height of the green area is compared to our orange reference height. Max and min will automatically select the highest and lowest measurements as our reference area. For now, we'll turn this off and press next. To go back and adjust any of those settings, we can select the relevant option in measurement position settings. You can also adjust the reading of the measurement using the zero offset feature. Let's say this is my master part and I want to read how far off future parts are from this master. I have my shift value set to zero, so I can click the zero offset button and that will change my reading to zero. Now I can set my tolerances based on the master part. Let's say I have a tolerance of plus or minus 0.5 millimeters. I can set my high or upper limit to 0.5 and my low or lower limit to negative 0.5. I'll hit test to show you how this works. In test mode, we can view a live image of the sensor. If I replace our measured piece with a smaller object, the measurement falls far below our tolerances and we get a no good reading. If I swap a taller piece under the measurement point, the measured value is above our 0.5 millimeter tolerance and I get a no good reading. When I put the original measure piece back in, we see we're back between our limits and we get an OK reading. Now I'll click end test and for the purposes of this demonstration, I'll click clear to get the measured value back. I'll also change my high and low limits to 23 and 21 millimeters respectively. In the extended functions, we have more options for our step tool. First, you have the option to specify your measurement range. This can help speed up the processing time of a program by limiting how much of the vertical area the sensor is scanning. 
For example, if you want the IX to ignore any values outside of plus or minus 5 millimeters from the measured point, you can set the range to plus or minus 5 millimeters. You can see visually what areas are excluded for each point as you change your range by observing the overlay on screen. We'll leave our range at the default, then click close. You can also rename your average height tool. I'm measuring a screw, so I'll rename the tool to screw, and you can see it changed the tool name. You can also perform a two-point calibration, which is used when the measured values don't quite match the real-world values you'd expect. In most cases, you do not need to enable this. For more information on this function, please refer to the dedicated video on two-point calibration. For now, I'll press close here, then OK. Now we can press next to step four, and because our outputs aren't relevant for this video, I'll click complete settings, and then yes. Now that I'm back on my main screen, I'll put the sensor in run mode, and you can see we're able to measure our part and determine a good versus no good measurement. Thank you for watching.